Broadcasting from the commodity capital of the world, Zurich, Switzerland, this is Insider's Guide to Energy. This addition to Insider's Guide to Energy is brought to you by Fidectus. Go to www.fidectus.com for more information. Welcome to Insider's Guide to Energy. I'm your host, Chris Sass, and with me as usual is Johan Oberg. Johan, how's it going this week? It's uh, another week, Chris. Great to be on the show. Uh, my week is as a normal week, which means I'm extremely jealous uh, of you this week to be able to go to my hometown, well, at least my second hometown. So I'm more interested in understanding how's your week. Well, I'm back in London. I've been back here in three weeks. I think this is you know, my second time here in three weeks. So uh, it's nice to be able, being able to travel and see my customers again and be you know talking to energy traders face to face as opposed to doing it on uh, FaceTime or doing it on some video conference. Uh, it's great. Um, it's nice and warm here, although it was kind of a gray day. We did see a little bit of sun. It, it, it's, it's great to be in London. It's, it's a lot of fun. Fantastic place. Um, as I said, a bit jealous. But um, another week, another show, another guest. Uh, well, interesting to be in one. the UK with our guest, right? So, you know, what we were watching is a whole bunch of no- noise and, and information about gas, gas prices, shortages, supply. And so, although we're not going to directly talk about that, we are going to talk about gas. And our, our guest is an expert in this. He, he brings some interesting technology. And so when he and I first talked in a pre-conversation, um, he talked a little bit of Internet of Things kind of stuff and, and, and pressure reading and gas lines and stuff. And, and it, at first, it didn't click to me of how this helps with renewables and how this helps, helps with the whole story of what's going on. And, and so I'm hoping through today's interview, we figure out how having all these sensors and all the pieces that he makes with his company brings value to our customers and our, our audience. No, I agree. And I, I think for me, this is especially interesting because it kind of connects my previous role with my current role. So, so you know, as you know, I'll, uh, exactly. Not that far back. But you know that uh, we are, with our team in Germany, we work a lot on biogas. Of course, we're an energy company. We're an energy trader. So we, we do uh, some of the gas as well. But in my previous role at uh, Telia, we built the IoT business. So, so the IoT has always been fairly close, and we, we launched products as the IoT in a box, which was the sensor, sensor pressuring kind of the software together with hardware combination. So I'm, I'm really curious to learn a little bit more about how they actually put this into scale and, and actually create value from what used to be back in the days, only a few years ago, technology only. So this is really looking forward to see the real values coming out of this now from these kind of technology themes. Well, what we can do is we can speculate, or I can just introduce Adam Kingdon, CEO of Autonomy Limited. Adam, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Chris. It's a great pleasure to be here. Well, we're excited to have you as our guest. As you can hear in our pre-conversation, we, we anticipate where you may go, but as, as Johan is apt to say, is we don't really know where the conversation is going to go, but we have some expectations, right or wrong. But before we go into the technology, maybe you could start by telling your audience a little bit about your background and who you are. Well, my name's Adam Kingdon, and I'm the CEO and the founder of a company called Utonomy. And uh, I founded Utonomy back in 2015, very specifically to develop new technology to reduce the leakage on the gas distribution network. Um, I'm sure you're aware that methane leakage is a, is 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 um, a real serious worldwide problem, and, and uh, you know particularly because the, it's uh, so much worse greenhouse gas than CO two. And uh, but prior to founding Utonomy, I founded a company called Ito Water, which uh, actually developed quite a similar technology, but for the water distribution network to reduce the leakage uh, on the water network. And and while I was running uh, Ito, I, I had a 
call from a couple of gas networks saying, uh, you know, we also have a problem with leakage and uh, maybe the I2O technology could help us as well. So, so we had a look at the, the um, we had a look at what, you know, the um, gas networks were a lot different from water networks. So we ended up deciding to stick with water. But when I left I2O in the uh, end of 2014, I got back in touch with those gas networks and said, uh, are you still looking for a solution to help you reduce your leakage? And they said, you know, you bet we are. You know, this is a really important issue for us. Uh, and if you can come up with some, some uh, clever technology and a better way of doing it, uh, we'd be really interested. So, so, that, so that's, that's what I founded Utonomy. So when you say leakage, um, can you help me understand what that means and, and what causes it and where it's going? Is it just going to the atmosphere? What, what's happening to the leakage? Yeah, well, well it's, um, some, of the, some of the pipes still in the network in the older, older cities is, is still is cast iron. Or, uh, and and uh, each, I mean, there's not a huge, huge percentage of gas lost, but each joint um, le le leaks a little bit of methane. And, and across a whole network of thousands of kilometers of pipe, that, that can add up to significant amounts. And, um, and that, that methane is just released into the atmosphere. And obviously, methane is a terrible greenhouse gas. And uh, you know, over a 20-year period, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about 84 times worse than CO2. Um, obviously, people usually, usually talk about a 100-year period where it's, it's about 29 times or 28 times worse um, greenhouse gas and CO2. But actually, I mean, given that we've got so many, we're really worried about the short term and we're really worried that we're getting, to, maybe getting some sort of tipping point. And there's, there's quite an argument to use the 20 year figure of 84 um, as, you know, certainly as much as the, the 29 figure for uh, over 100 years. So if, so if, I, if, I, if I go back a little bit to, to, to Chris' question in terms of, of how it actually works, and it's probably a stupid question, but obviously you, you, you put on some kind of sensor data around the, the network, and, and that triggers where the leakage is. And how, how, does, how does it actually work, and how do you actually repel it? Or how well, does this... Yeah, I should have explained that. Yeah, we, we, what we're actually doing is, is uh, optimizing the pressure in the gas distribution network. Because the, the the leakage is directly proportional to the pressure, so if you if you could reduce the pressure on average uh, over the year by say twenty percent, you're going to have twenty percent less leakage. Basically, you're going to lose less gas through the through through the existing uh, joints and leaks than that, that already exists in the pipe. So so we don't actually fix the leaks, but we reduce the amount of gas that's lost out of the network, and uh, and, and managing that pressure is actually a surprisingly difficult job. And, uh, and, th and that's why, the, I mean, that's why there haven't been solutions, our solution hasn't, hasn't been used before. It's a very tough thing to do. So you, so, you talked in the pre, pre-interview with me about, about the managing the pressure. And, and I think you, you mentioned that they send crews out to actually adjust and in, in, in certain networks, because it was hard, would only do it several times a year. They weren't actively monitoring the pressure or they weren't actively changing it. Is that... Do I remember that correctly from our conversation? Yeah, yeah well, that, that's correct because the, I mean, the pressure that you, you, you have in the pipes, say in the city or a town, is, is controlled by thousands of gas governors. So, so the, 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 the gas flows from the higher pressure tiers through a gas governor into the low pressure tiers, which are low pressure pipes, which distribute the gas to the houses. And all those gas governors uh, are fixed, have a fixed outlet pressure. I mean, they're completely manual. So if you want to, if you want to adjust the pressure output, you, you go along there with a, you open, they're, they're sitting in a kiosk by the side of the road. You open, open the door, you go in there with a screwdriver and you adjust the pressure by hand. And, uh, and the problem with that is that the, obviously demand varies hugely throughout the year. So on a cold winter morning, you may have about a hundred times the demand that you get on a warm summer evening. And uh, if you're gonna, gonna have enough pressure to deal with the cold winter morning, then uh, you, you, you've got to set the, the, the governor's pressures very conservatively high. And that means that through the summer, when you've got less, less demand, or so at night or in the summer, you've got much lower demand, you know, you, you've, got too, you've got more pressure than you need. You, and all that excess pressure is creating excess leakage. So, uh, and, and, and the bit you mentioned about uh, manual control, well, they, the way they get over, the, get over it at the moment is they have seasonal setting. So 
you know, they'll have a, the governors will be on a winter setting, uh, and so they'll be set pr- pretty high to make sure they can cover any any really extreme demand conditions in the peak, winter peaks. When everyone, the first thing in the morning, everyone's central heating goes on, there's a big peak. They've got to have enough pressure in, going into the network to cover that. Um, so yes, and then uh, when it comes to springtime, things warm up a bit. They don't need that pressure, so they send the whole crew round thousands and thousands of governors, turning the pressure to, turning the pressure back down again. And you know, and, and then if if they're not careful, they turn the pressures down, and then we have a cold snap in in April or something, and they have to run around quickly and turn them all back up again. And and it can take one network, you know, up to three weeks using all their technicians to get around and do this job. So so uh, so the the first thing the autonomy system does is uh, is is uh, enable them to remotely control all the governors in the network, so they don't they don't have to send people out to to go and do it. So 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 I think that was that's very, I think that's really interesting because the first one is obviously then to turn it off and on, which yeah. which can be done manually or through a, a sensor or, or or automatic thing. But then the if I read it correctly, if I understand it correctly, obviously an, an AI or an Internet of Things does more than just on and off. So, yeah. so what, what are the other layers that you add to this apart from weather or, or kind of seasonal? Yeah, I think you're very right, right to look at it like that because that's how we look at it and how our customers look at it. We've, we've got the, the basic system enables you to remotely control the, um, the governors. And, and then on top of that, we have, a, we have a, our, our cloud hosted software which uses AI then to work out what is the optimum setting that each, each of these governors should be set at. And, and it's, 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 a, it's a really complicated problem because uh, so you have a town like Southampton where we're based, it's got 20, 20 25 governors all feeding the same network and they all, they all uh, react against each other. Um, and the demand is changing very fast and it's changing a lot. And, and, and then you, you, you're trying to monitor a number of different points in the network to make sure you don't go below the minimum. So if you go below the minimum, then you, you risk uh, someone's boiler stopping or cutting someone off, which absolutely, absolutely you've got to avoid at all costs. So, so, so it's, a, it's a really tough problem. And um, we, 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 we've got some really clever AI people on the team. And uh, you know, we've come up with, a, we, we think it's a very effective, good solution to that. Um, but the, the hardware was a really serious challenge too, um, and, and we've had to, to in order to in order to implement the solution, we've had to develop the hardware and the software. So the I mean, the hardware is, is really really tough. It's not just an off the sh- some off the shelf um, actuators and and, and router, routers. It's routers. It's um, it's um, we've had to develop the hardware ourselves because the, the to be able to control the governor, we have to retrofit some hardware onto the, the governors themselves, which are sitting in a kiosk and there's potentially leaking gas, so potentially leaking methane. So you have to regard it as being an explosive environment. So, so we have to have our hardware certified to the highest level of what's called ATEX, you know, which means that uh, under no, no circumstances at all, no, no, no failures, no shorts, no faults of any kind, could cause a temperature rise in any of the components, which would then trigger an explosion. So it's a really tough thing to do. And, and w- w- before we started, we found some papers that said you'll never be able to get ATEX zone zero with electric motors. Uh, but we, we, we got some smart engineers and we got some very, found some very, very special motors and we've been able to do it. And, uh, and then you've also got no power there um, and you've got no comms. And if anything goes wrong at all, it's got to fail in a safe pressure. You, you can't have it fail. You can't have anything go wrong, and 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 and, and either, or well, certainly can't fail with a, with an overpressure because that, that 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 would be very very um, that would really risk safety. And you don't want it to fail and cut anyone's gas off either. I mean that's that's not a great thing to do either. So so if, so we have to have a lot of redundancy and a lot of failovers. So that if any 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 components fail, software hangs, anything like that, like that, it it fails in a in a, in a safe known pressure. Uh, and so so there's a lot there's been a lot of really tough engineering going with the hardware as as well as the software uh, to develop the whole solution. And uh, so you, you talked about the hardware. You, you you there's a little bit you haven't yet covered the software angle of of what you've had to develop. 
Um, and so are gas companies going in and retrofitting then for, for, for reasons of just loss? Are they, is it because they're worried about greenhouse gas? Is it because of cost of losing gas or what, what's motivating them to put your system in place? Well, it, each market is a bit different, but in, in, in the UK, um, the regulator of Chen uh, gives some some pr- pretty um, pretty uh, generous. Well, probably people wouldn't accept, accept them as being generous, but 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 re- you know reasonably high incentive level incentives to to get the leakage down, and 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 then in the current price review period, yeah, they've they've also they've mirrored that by by. Um, uh, they'll impose fines if if it goes the wrong way as well. So so they're quite in, the network's quite incentivized financially. Um, they also they also have to publish their leakage figures, and, and they 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 in the price, part of the price review period was to set a target for each year during that review period, and, and they and they ha- every year they have to publish where they are against their target, and 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 they really don't want to be be seen to be missing their target, and it's very very bad reputationally. And uh, so, and then, and then the, I mean, obviously the, the cost of the, the, the gas price going up like it has, I mean, any gas that you lose through tr- any form of leakage or uh, is going to cost someone five times as much as it used to cost them. So, so that's, that's another incentive to, to get the leakage down. And uh, so now. Is the gas coming from a central source, or how? How is the? I, I understand power grids pretty well. I'm, I'm not so sure, sure I understand the gas. So I, I get that there's a pressure. So I'd equate that to like a base load that you'd have to have there that you want to have it. Where, where does the gas come into the system, and is it is your system involved in that? Yeah, we, we yeah, we're not we're not yet involved in the, in higher pressure tiers. I mean, I, I mean, basically the the gas. I mean, certainly I know the UK is better than other networks, but they're, they're probably pretty similar in concept so the gas will come in come in from the, from the north sea although i think about only about half our gas comes from the north sea now uh and, and then it's transmitted down the country in in big big steel pipes at about 70 bar which are the transmission lines like like the 400 kv or whatever transmission lines of electricity and probably a bit like the electricity that it then goes into a, 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 a low sort of lower tip pressure tier I don't know, probably about twenty bar, seven bar, then down to seven bar, and to two bar, and then and then and then in the in the in the, the pipes in the cities is millibars. So, so, so but all that uh, the the other reason they're going to need control is because that like like the electricity grids that is starting to change. That, that uh, used used to be the gas just came in at one end of the network and and then it fed down through through the different pressure tiers and came came out of Came into people out of into people's houses through their meter, and uh, but but right right now, it, the gas networks, I mean, the, the gas supply is getting more distributed, and particularly the first thing we're seeing is is uh, a lot of biomethane plants. There are over 100 biomethane plants have been built recently in the UK, and they tend to be built in the middle of nowhere. You know, they tend to be built where you've got the feedstock, so it's in, a, in the middle of North, uh, agricultural land, uh, piece of uh, in the middle of the uh, farmland. And, and they have to connect into the nearest bit of grid. The nearest bit of grid may be the medium pressure, maybe it's a two bar, or in the UK, it's usually the two bar network they feed into. And uh, so, 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 so it's all working in a different, different direction and they need control to be able to manage that. So that's the, that's the second big application for the autonomy system is to provide control in these medium pressure networks so they can allow, allow the, the feed in from the biomethane plants. And uh, these biomethane plants have, have you know, also have a particular particular issue with the feed-in because uh, uh, if 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 suddenly there's the demand drops on the bit of part of the network where they're feeding in, then they can't get the gas in anymore, and they've got no storage on site. They end up having to flare, which is you know hugely wasteful. So so they so the uh, you know, the group, the networks are we're looking at putting our system into this medium pressure networks. So they can get control of those medium pressure networks remotely, and and also we're looking at AI solutions on top of that, so they can automatically uh, prioritize the biomethane feed in at all times. So that, so 
any demand that is on that bit of the network is fed first by the biomethane uh, plant, and and the the, the, the uh, natural gas is there as a backup and is only used when when the biomethane plant can't can't supply enough of the demand. So, so one of the things when when I worked with IoT and connecting things in one, if it was connecting the cars, if it was connecting the homes or whatever it was connecting, you actually took from usually an innovative, smaller company, a startup company that had a very good idea, that had a solution to a problem. But there was always this crucial thing where connecting another a third party software, which might not be uh, pr pressure tested, it has a direct connection to something that is business critical in this case the gas into our homes even did was this how does the uh, the gas companies look at this where where they're actually allowing if i understand it correctly your software to be connected directly on to the distribution or or almost managing this yeah, well i guess there are a couple of things i mean firstly the way we've designed our system means that um the, 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 it, there's lo also local control of the governor. So, so if 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 the equipment of the governor loses connection with with the uh, with the central servers or the the, the, the cloud based software, uh, it, it's not it's, there's, there's no security concern at all. It it carry it carries on. Uh, it knows what to do, and 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 then when it 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 just doesn't upload its data and it doesn't it doesn't get updated. With with the, with the new with new schedules, but it, it 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 can operate in a safe mode until it reconnects again, which means that if the means that if the um, if the comms fails of the mobile phone network put, go, goes out, there's no safety issue at all, um, and 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 likewise if there's um, yeah it it can it can function without the central software. So if if for example there's an outage on the, the cloud server. Uh, it, would, it would it everything would, it would continue to function safely so that that's really part part of the design of the system but 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 you're completely right the um you know we we're doing a pretty key important pretty key job for the networks uh and and they they they're, going, they're taking a very strong interest in in the software and the way it's been built and and, and particularly the cyber security is a mm. is, is a massive issue uh, and and they you know they, they 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 do a lot of due diligence on on the on the software, and um, although we're, we're we we've um, we're small, we we got a relatively we got an engineering team around you know close to twenty, but even so we have we we haven't built every bit of the software platform ourselves, so we've partnered with a big software company Software AG, which ha have a, already have an IoT platform, and we've been able to build our applications on top of that. So, so, so really, we've been able to use something like, something like a middleware to, to that does all the basic functionality of managing the devices and, and managing the databases and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and, and managing the logins of customers. And, and we've built our application on top of that. So, so we've got a very, very robust platform um, that's, that's very well proven and supported by a very large company. That, that we've that we're running our software on top of, and I think that, that helps a lot. That's given some confidence mm. to to our to our customers. And, and which I, which uh, I think, and I think this is this is an interesting topic, and we discussed this back and forth. There's one thing of connecting. We had a few shows ago, uh, uh, a while ago on the show, talking about the Colonial Pipeline, obviously, and then all right, how how that was connected, and, and you got some of the other things. I'm always interested. in one, I, I, I have no problems uh, uh, with the actual technology because I think that's usually very good, the quality of the service. I'm, I'm always a little bit interested in terms of how the larger companies who are operating this business critical part is addressing a smaller startup uh, because we discussed that on the show a little bit in terms of the, the, the relationship between, let's call it the old legacy. <laughs> Yes. Versus yes. the the, uh, the 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 smarter or the the, the new startups that scale up the, the new technology and how that interacts sometimes clashes and sometimes interacts. So so that's a little bit also quite interesting for me to understand. Yes. Uh, yes. How this works. Well, well, of course, the other thing to say is that that we've worked in 
very, very close partnership with our first customer, SGN. I, I, you know, we'd never have done it without that really close partnership. I mm. mean, almost from day one. So, so, so they, you know, they, they put a huge amount of, amount of effort into this as well, and 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 we work very closely with them to 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 make sh- make sure. I mean, with with a, with a lot a lot of different points of view and some some very some real like experts on on networks and how they operate and how governors operate and, and the safety or the safety issues uh, we, we've worked very closely with them to to ensure that that our product you know is is is, is as low risk as it is as possible to be um uh, for, for their network and and they've also got i mean the customer is sgn is our first first customer on the, the networks in the uk They've also got a very strong IT department, very strong IT team, and they know this is the way the world's going. Uh, they have a cloud-first st- strategy, for example. So they, you know, they, they they've already worked out what it means to put put software safely in the cloud uh, without without with, without risk. So yeah. so working very closely with their teams as well has, has helped helped a lot. But 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 we, I mean, right 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 from the day one, we've been very aware cyber security is is going to be a massive issue, and. Uh, so, so that 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 that's every part of the design has been, you know, we've yeah. been taking taking so, note so, of it. So, so early on, would you would you say that your your kind of prime customers almost need to have this cloud strategy in order to make this work? Or, well, it's it's a, just a really efficient way of doing it. Um, but but fortunately, we've partnered with um, with a company that's with so- Software AG. We we can. They have got the capability of taking the soft, taking the, the cloud hosted software and either putting it into a private cloud uh, or in, on, on on premise for the customer. So 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 I mean if they if they if the customer really really wants to have their software where they can see it and touch it on their on premise, then uh, you know we can do that. But it's 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 probably a less efficient model. Yeah. And, uh, so so you you talked a bit about. Um... AI and the use of AI. Um, you talked about this, this software ecosystem and this partner you work with. So AI is a little bit of a buzzword these days. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So maybe you could walk us through what what kind of AI or machine learning or what 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 is a system actually using AI for? What what is it getting smart about and what is it doing? What kind of things? Well, well, I guess that there are a couple of. Um... Things we need to we need to know uh, to to know what what how to set the pressures. Uh, and the first thing we need we need to understand what, what's going to happen to demand over the next twenty four hours. <clears throat> so so part of the AI or machine learning is 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 getting a, as accurate as possible forecast of demand on a on a pretty much minute by minute basis over the next twenty four hours because that affects that affects what the pressures we've got to set. At. That affects how we set the pressures. The other thing we've got to know about is is how how changing the pressure on each governor affects what's happening in the network. So we need. So we also we also develop real time network. We also develop models of how the net, of the network, and we combine those two things uh, to by combining those two things, and we can we can uh, predict what what is going to happen in the network, and therefore what what uh, settings we need for each of the governors so so it's probably more more machine learning than anything else but and then so is, is it I, I get the 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 weather or the prediction capability demand has inputs there that the flow dynamics or understanding what the pressure in the the network would do is that something that you need to continually learn? Does it does a system change its behavior, or is it like are there physics? Is there certain laws that are just kind of consistent in in how you expect it to behave? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't go into too too much detail here, but it, yeah, it's um, it, it does it does change that also also changes over time. So so we do need you know we need continuous data from the network to to update update, update all the models. So another thing you mentioned is is you guys have invented some unique um, or engineered unique uh, s- switches or um, devices to to governors and, and to control things. So what's your supply chain like? I mean, how do you get economies to scale if you're building these 
you know, are you building them one off or do you have them produced at scale as you, are you growing? How, how does that work? Well, we've, we, well, we've partnered with a, a very strong subcontract manufacturing uh, company, you know, with, with, uh, you know, a, a, a capable of, of producing the product at, 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 at quite some scale. So, so, um, you know, we, we, we don't do any manufacturing ourselves. And, uh, so, so they, they've been supplying sort of relatively small quantities so far. Uh, we, we've, we've just equipped a couple of networks for SGN, which we've been running for the last couple of years. We're about, we're just on the cusp of moving into, into sort of commercial phase of the company, the commercial life of the company. So, so we're just working with our, with the supply chain to scale up, um, uh, to much higher quantities. And, uh, so that's, that's, you know, that's How all going, that's all part of the process of, of moving. Yeah. How how many of these does a network get? Are these like every quarter mile? Or are they every what 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 number of sensors are in a network? Are these hundreds? Are they thousands? Well, well, there, yeah, thousands. Yeah, I mean, in, in the UK, if you if we if we covered the whole of the UK, there'd be about twenty thousand twenty thousand um, devices to control the government. I mean, there are about twenty thousand governor, governors, and uh, so. Um, so to control the governor, control all the governors, you need about twenty thousand of these devices, and then you also have to need sensors out on the network that's measuring that are measuring the pressures in the network as well, and sending the sending the pressure data back, and a probably similar number of those. So, yeah, so so it's, it, I mean, for for, I mean, for it's 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 not a huge number of endpoints for some IoT applications, but it's uh, it's, it's still quite a lot for us to manage. But if it's if it's twenty thousand total, which is kind of the, the the overall, and I know you're in the startup and kind of the the initial stages of this, but uh, obviously you don't do twenty thousand at once. So what would be kind of an average, if it's possible to say in this early stage? But what would be an average project if you go in the city of Southampton, for example? You mentioned a little bit in the beginning. What would yeah. be the what is a normal project if it if it if, it, if there is a normal? Well, what would, yeah. Well, if the first the, f the first sort of rollout stage, sort of this, this beyond pilot, uh, we, we, we're just finalizing at the moment with our first customer, and that's going to be around 700 systems. So that's a sort of sort of typical. That system, same thing as governors, or system, same thing as governors. Yes. Okay. Right, so you yeah, need, right. every, every governor, you need us. Yeah, and uh, and that 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 would do. Um, I, I believe about about 50 or 60 networks, so 50 or 60 towns, or, or Worth of, uh, worth of worth of governors, so yeah, so it's a re it's a reasonable start. I mean, it's, mm. it's starting at a, at a, at a re quite a reasonable scale, um, and we've been running uh, running pilots f since the beginning of two thousand nineteen. Uh, so, so, so out of curiosity, smaller yeah. scale. Yeah. Yeah. So out of curiosity, uh, you know, I put my business hat on and, and kind of drill in a little bit to, to the. To the business case in this one, where, where are you making the money? Is it on the the hardware? Is it the kind of an operational uh, part? Is it the software, where or a com combination of both? I, I guess in uh, initially that it's it's an upfront cost of the hardware, but how, how does the business case look like for you guys? Well, 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 for our customers, it's pretty good. It's a it's that a, I am yeah <laughs> payback yeah. Um, yeah, for, for, yeah. For, for for us, we we make us on normal manufacturing margin on the uh, on the hardware that, go, that we that we we sell the hardware as so as a capital sale, and, and then uh, they we supply the software as a service. So then the software is supplied on a, on a on a sort of annual or monthly fee basis. So, so you don't take a rev share. Well, all, we, all, we, all the money you save. <laughs> well, well, we've we it's interest interesting idea. You know, we. Yeah, there may be clients who who would be interested in that, um, but at the moment we take a fixed fee for the for the software. Yeah. And so, where does the software evolve to? So you you get in a bunch of data. You're going to have as you grow your customer base a pretty big historical database, I assume, at a certain point. Um, where do you see this going? What, what where does this change the industry, or what does this do? You know, where's your company helping drive the industry? Well, I think in a number of different directions. I mean, I, I mean, first the, the first problem we've, we've focused on is leakage. But then, very quickly, our customers said, "Well, actually, we've got this bigger problem, which is how, we've got these biomethane plants feeding in, and in the future we're going to have hydrogen. Uh, how do we control the network 
to enable that to happen. So, so, so that's that's the next problem we're addressing. Um, and, uh, and and then there's also so so really moving from leakage into hydrogen and biomethane. And, and then also there's um, there's there's a lot of other problems that we can solve using using the data and AI from the network. And there's huge scope to do to do that. And uh, so, so really, the ultimate goal is to have a much more automated, uh, as far as possible, maintenance-free network that's pretty much running itself most of the time, um, and that, that that's absolutely achievable. So, that, that, I mean, that's the direction so you, we're heading. Are you unique, um, or are there competitors? I mean, you, you talked about a fairly long development cycle. You talked about some intellectual property that you developed. So, do you have competitors in the space? But very little. Um, the, the, we, there's there's one UK based competitor that developed their their solutions so at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, and there's still quite a lot of units, a lot of units in the, in the ground still. Um, but but it's uh, it, it was developed way before anyone thought of using machine learning or AI, and uh, and and also it's it, it, it it's quite difficult to install. Uh, you, you've got to replumb the governor station. And 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 it's quite expensive to maintain. So, so um, so we're the, we're the first that we know of with modern technology doing this, do, do, addressing this solution with a sort of modern IoT technology doing this solution, and, and also using these actuators, which are, are are very quick, fast to install in the governor stations. You don't have to replumb the governor station. You don't have to switch off the gas. You you just uh, you can retrofit retrofit our kit into the station in a, in a couple of hours. So is the gas market going to decline as we more electrify the world? And, and so I, I heard you say hydrogen um, is, a, is a possible future use, but is it a declining market? So, I mean, is it going to go rapidly downhill from, from being inside the industry because people don't want to burn, burn fossil fuels or, or gas? Well, yeah, yes, I'm, 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 I'm sure there'll be... The, you know, the gas demand will go down as 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 uh, electricity takes over uh, a larger share of heating in the home, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so so I'm sure we'll see that, but I think we'll see it. We'll see it at the same time a switch to to low carbon gases, so to a big switch to to hydrogen and a switch to biomethane. Uh, so so that'll present significant opportunities for us to. Because they're going to need the network's going to need much more control in the network to enable them to to to, to use to bring in these gases into the network, and uh, so where 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 there may be fewer networks or there may be less gas transported, uh, we think we've, the, the switch to biomethane and, and hydrogen will, will keep us pretty busy. So, so that's from a technology or or a business point of view. Uh, uh, you're based in the UK. Uh, you, you mentioned Southampton. You mentioned a few UK cases. Uh, it, do you also review uh, geographical uh, expansion? Uh, is there gas markets interesting uh, elsewhere? Or I know UK is quite big for gas, but but very very much so. I mean, our, our technology is, is applicable to any gas network really uh, around the world, and uh, and, we, and the, we've we've had some really strong interest, particularly from the US. Uh, particularly for the northeast US, where where they have some old low pressure systems, where they're still still using um, some metallic pipe, uh, and and they also have they're also worried about their methane leakage, and and, and uh, are, are increasingly coming under pressure to do something about it. So we've had some really strong interest from from, from the US, um, and, and also from Europe. I mean, even even from countries where they they have more modern networks, uh, they. St- they still get see value in being able to adjust the governors when they want to remotely. So, uh, yeah, no, we we definitely see a very big worldwide opportunity, um, but but we 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 want to do our first rollout at scale in the UK, close to home, with the customers we know well, uh, and, and but but very soon after that, we expect to move to to the US and to other other European markets. So, are you developing additional sensors or? or internet of things that go with the space. So, I mean, it sounds like you've got governors. It sounds like you've got pressure gauges of some sort. Are, are your R&D or your engineers working on new products or new value adds in the gas system? Or is it all based on software 
going forward where the, the higher value comes? Well, it, it, it's, it's largely software. I mean, we, I mean once, once, once we've got our hardware installed in the network, then, then uh, I'm a collect, we're able to control the network, we're able to collect data for the network. Then it's, it's largely a question of developing additional further software applications to do, to do new things for them. So uh, we may need the odd additional sensor, uh, for example, to, to, if we want to measure flow, for example, uh, we might need, need to insert additional sensors. But, uh, but, but it's going to be mainly software applications using the data we're already, we've already got, we're already collecting and, uh, and controlling the assets that we're already controlling. So is your team more physical? Like what kind of engineers do you have on, of your 20 team members? Are they software? And like engineers, well, whole, they... I mean, that's the, 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 we've got a whole, all disciplines. I mean, that's, that's, that's the challenge of developing our solution. Yeah, we had to have some clever people doing a whole range of different things. So we've got, um, we've got some really smart mechanical engineers because we had to solve a really tough mechanical pro engineering problem. Um, we, 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 and, and, and we're going to make, going to need mechanical engineers going forward because every time we go in the new market, they've got a different type of governor and we have to develop a new interface for the governor. So, so mechanical engineering is going to remain a skill for us. We've got electronics engineers and, and, and particularly electronics engineers who know about ATEX are quite rare. So we've got a very strong electronics team. We've got a software team that has developed the, the software on the devices in the governors. And they also develop the software in, in, on the cloud, cloud platform. And then also we've got a AI team developing the, uh, the AI, AI solution. So, and, and then we've got a fantastic CTO who, who, you know, who, who's, who's been responsible for pulling that team together and also leading that team and, uh, and, uh, coming up with the solutions. And, and, and it really has been a challenge, a, bit, a lot, to, a lot, a lot to do. It sounds like you've built a, a, a pretty, um, complex team to, to solve a complex problem. So yeah. did you have trouble finding investors that shared the vision to go along and saw this as a problem statement to, I mean, you're a fairly young company, so I don't know if you're a private company or if you had investors come along, did you have trouble selling the idea? No, no, no not at all. Investors? Yeah, no, the, the, well, the, the investors um, always get it pretty quickly. I mean, they can see that it's a, it's a massive problem and, and we've got a solution to it that it works. They, no, they, they, the investors really get it. Um, I, I mean, they, obviously, the, the the downside of investing in our space is is the sales cycles are pretty long, uh, and particularly in gas, where you 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 you've got to you, you've got to be very very sure that it's safe before you deploy it. So so there's a lot of extra checks, and uh, so yeah, so yeah, so so um, no, they they completely get the, the market, they get the technology, they get the solution. I mean, they like. I mean, it's very clear to understand and, uh, but, but, uh, and they just, they just have to be able to, they have to be a little more patient than some investors because of the, the long sales cycles, but it's, it's going to be worth it because there's a very big market there. And, and, and the other thing is, uh, the big barriers to entry. I mean, it's a, because it's been a very tough thing to develop. We've needed a lot of investment from us. We've needed a lot of investment from our customers as well, um, to, to get where we are. It's a bit harder for other people coming wanting to enter the market. So, so, so uh, that's it's. I always love to hear the business angle. Usually, Johan's asking the business questions, um, but yeah. I, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, I've got as we're pressing up against time, kind of one final question from my side is: so, what surprised you? What did you learn that you went into this and didn't think you would know? So, you, you you've been doing this. You've had trials for some period of time. You've got some live customers now. So, what's the lesson learned that you that you didn't didn't expect along the way? Oh, lo loads of lessons. Absolutely. Please, please you know, share some. I can, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably the, um, or maybe the maybe the biggest one, the biggest one that um, that when we started, we we thought we we just need to develop one one system, one solution, go and trial it, and then we'd be able to start selling it. And and uh, we 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 then found that that actually there are a huge number of different variety of governors in the network. And, and, and quite a bunch of them were under the ground as well. And, uh, and our customers explained to us that I actually, there wasn't any point in being able to do half the governors in a network 
uh, you had to do all the governors in a network. So for the system solution to be deployable, you need we needed to be able to address these different governor types. So that that was a bit of a learning. I mean, that's basically some due diligence we should have done better at the beginning. Um, but but uh, yeah, but we learned a lot. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things. I mean, it's been quite a, quite a journey of discovery the whole the whole last five years. It's, it's and we've we've had some really tough problems to overcome. And, uh, the uh, the technical team's done an amazing job getting over them. I mean, every time we oh. see, we kept coming up against a problem and thinking, well, that, that is a real showstopper. I don't know how we're going to resolve that. And then after a while, you eventually you, you find you have solved it. So, so um, you know, we've got a you know, got a fantastic team to put this product together. I think that's. Um... Uh, I, I thought it was really, really interesting. Uh, I, I, when I read up on it in the beginning of, of the show, I, I was I was kind of focusing on some kind of sensor data, but I, I, I kind of enjoyed discussion and learning about this pressure, which I, I, I didn't know before. But maybe one final question, and, and as, as Chris mentioned, I usually go into the commercial and the kind of sales approach around it. Uh, you mentioned the long sales cycles. Uh, do you see them diminishing? Do you see them getting shorter and shorter because of your own technology and the way you deploy it? Or is the the actual sales cycle, the long sales cycle, based on the customer's decisions? Because I think the sales cycles go both ways here. And you, you now have a proven case. Uh, the needs are there for the customers. So wh why is the sales cycle long uh, or so long as, as an obstacle? Well, well I'm, I'm sure it will shorten. and and. We, we're working very hard to, to, to shorten it by making it easier for the customer by make sure that all, 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 the, all the information they need, all the technical data and everything they need is available to them really quickly and easily so they can assess the product prop quickly. So we're doing everything we can. And, and also we've got SGN, who we've been, we've been doing our initial trials with, have been very generous about talking to our new customers, sharing information with them, which helps. Um, but at the end of the day, I, th I think... Or, yeah, you know, I think in my experience, all utilities have pretty long sales cycles just because <laughs> the nature of their organization. Um, yeah, I think that, yeah. Gas probably particularly because they've, you've got the critical safety ang angle as well. I mean, they, hmm. they cannot deploy anything on their network till they're absolutely 100% sure that it's safe. And, that, and, and getting to that point sometimes takes time. Yeah. So, so I, 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 th I think we, we, we'd love to have the sales cycle a lot shorter, but... I think if I think that I think we we have to be realistic. So I appreciate you answering that question. I, I think what I've learned, Johan, through through our conversation today is when when Adam and I first spoke and we were going to talk about you know sensor in the gas network engaged, it, it it didn't resonate super well with me at the beginning to be totally transparent. And then as we talk more, and he talked about um, you know the leakage problem, so the immediate need started. That was interesting. That the getting biomethane and, and hydrogen and other gases and being able to handle them getting into the the network and, and having the same kind of distributed input be different in a gas network than perhaps it has been in the past. That got my attention. And then as you move to the kind of data points that, that he described with the AI and with, you know, getting the forecast and really understanding and trying to predict what the pressure could be based on, you know, what's in the system, based on a bunch of factors that would be hard for an individual to do, but for a machine relatively easy to do if you have the right programs. I think that's, that's all pretty cool stuff. So you take something that really kind of a solid state kind of thing doesn't sound exciting at face value. But when you put all the pieces together, like you've done, Adam, I, I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I think it, it makes a difference. And I, I appreciate you sharing the story that to me, if I, hopefully I've repeated back what I've learned, I hope that's what you were trying to tell us. If I'm yeah, wrong, no, very please much call so. me out. But um, I think it's pretty exciting stuff. And I, and I want to thank you for coming on the show with us. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting me. I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been, it's been great. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks very much, Johan. And yeah. Great to have you on, Adam. Well, for our audience, you've spent another hour listening to Insider's Guide to Energy. I hope you've enjoyed the, the journey uh, as we've learned about the gas systems and pressure in the gas. And I, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If you do enjoy these shows, please invite your friends to listen, share our link, and don't forget to subscribe to both your uh, where you get your podcasts and to our LinkedIn channel. And we look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you very much.